And there she is. Hewlett Packard E3611A. It's not brand new. It's not pretty. But hopefully. Well, looking at the work. condition, it's uh, got some residue from stickers and it's got a crack in the case which they disclosed on the eBay listing, so that's no problem. Looks like they attempted to fix the case with glue and it seeped into the, this area here. Well, let's see if it works. Best way to do that is to plug it in. All right, got a pair of test leads hooked up. Got it plugged in. Here is the moment of truth. Is it gonna blow up and work? And it looks like it works. The voltage doesn't seem to be, oh. Uh oh. I don't like that. That voltage is going up way too slow. It's only four volts at the most. Uh-oh. Amps goes to seven amps. Hey oh boy. That's not good at all. That is a fail. It's obviously not working. Grab a voltmeter, see what it does. Oh, I got a voltmeter hooked up. And it's pretty much reading what the front panel says that it is. This is a fail. Something is definitely wrong in Wonderland. Looks like we've got some repair work to do on a voltmeter, or I mean on a power supply. Disappointing, but roll your dice. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Well, I only paid 50 bucks for the th unit with the shipping. So I figure eBay be a good place to pick one up. And they're about a hundred and a half on eBay. Except for this one, and now we know why this one was so cheap. I don't know if you can see this or not, but the circuit board is covered with some type of greasy substance. Sometimes that can cause, I've seen Things like that before, where stuff gets spilled on a circuit board. And what can happen is you'll just start getting ghost voltages. It, this stuff will actually start conducting, giving weird readings on the op amps. I think I'm going to try and clean that board up. Okay. Well, I've got the oil cleaned off of this circuit board, and I've got a couple of capacitors replaced. I have a feeling that the oil that's on, that was on this board created a bunch of uh, kind of static voltages, little ghost voltages that got in and screwed something up. There is no microcontroller on this thing. It's a purely analog power supply. Um, one of the things I did notice is that this trace here, you can see <clears throat> this uh, overlay material has been burned off of it, but the trace is okay. I removed this transistor and I, that's one of the capacitors I replaced there. Replaced these two and that one there where the transistor goes to that. Just to show you the capacitors I pulled out of this thing, you can see the oil just caked on the bottom of those things. A lot of times these things will kind of leak oil when they rupture, but I don't think these are ruptured. I think that's something else was leaking onto the circuit board. 
I'm going to order a schematic from eBay. You can get them. They've got schematics and uh, repair manuals out there for these things. So I think I'll do that instead of trying to trace out and reverse engineer it. One thing I did notice that I was kind of uh, impressed with is the construction of this power supply. This is actually a pretty well built power supply. It doesn't seem like it should be worth the you know four or five hundred dollars they cost new, but I don't know what these uh, chips are here exactly on the display board. A closer shot. <clears throat> They don't have really any numbers that come up when I do a Google search. There's two of them here, one for the current, one for the voltage. I assume they're just basically seven segment display drivers. It's a pretty simple design. It's got uh, a 10 turn pot. It's got these little blue 10 turn pots. One of the things that I thought was kind of neat, the way they did that, is they had the big honking transformer. And you can see here, they had a standoff up here, and in the back, they actually use the heat sink as the other standoff. I thought that was actually a really cool idea. Nice, uh, clean construction, very simple power supply. But all I need to do now is just order up the repair manual and schematic and hopefully I will be in business. We're back again. It's probably been about 10 days since uh, last time I had the camera on this. ordered the manual for this power supply here. So I got the schematic and everything ready and it looks like, well I think it's probably this chip there. I think the problem is this U4, which actually adjusts the current, those two there. I noticed the voltage was working okay, but the problem was these two the constant current, constant voltage LEDs were both on at the same time. We had something seriously screwed up and the current was never correct on it. I got the parts ordered in, so Next thing to do is I'm going to go ahead and replace that U4 and see if that works. Well, I replaced U4, which is an LF442, a high-speed op-amp. It did fix it. Got it working. I believe the problem was that this power supply was in an oily environment, and that oil got down onto the circuit board and started conducting. Shorted something out, which is evident by the solder mask that was burned off. And probably zapped the uh, LF442 chip. The crack here that's on the side probably is caused by somebody trying to take this thing apart and seeing what was wrong with it. Not knowing what they're doing or not having enough patience to pull it apart properly and they snap the front cover off trying to the top part kind of lifts up and then slides back they probably lifted it up too far and cracked the face like I say I went and bought this off eBay and I paid like twenty dollars for it which I thought was a decent deal at the time I just wanted to get this thing fixed I would recommend actually if you've got an old power supply or something this exact manual is online for free so I wasted 20 bucks for nothing but I didn't know that until after I ordered it for it but a lot of these old Hewlett Packard Agilent power supplies these manuals are all on a lot of them are online schematics and everything well was it worth it and would I do it again uh, yeah it was worth it for me because I only paid $35 for the power supply, uh, the part cost a dollar, the capa electrolytic capacitors are replaced were, I mean, just a few cents, it didn't hardly cost anything, it cost a couple hours of my time and elbow grease to get everything cleaned up, I should be able to find a good use for it. Uh, would I recommend it for 
other people to buy these non-working power supplies or equipment. That all depends if you're a student and you've already got a power supply and you just want a project. Absolutely, if you can find something cheap, I would go ahead and get it. If you don't have a power supply and you need a power supply, I would buy a working power supply if you're a student. I would not buy the non-working stuff. You're going to want something that you can use right away. If you need a power supply, just buy a working unit. Don't buy a non-working unit. But this was not, not a bad project to do. It was a pretty easy fix. And that's it. Hey, if you like these type of videos, give it a thumbs up. I'll be doing a lot more, so please subscribe. Talk to you later.